Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, today we will be analyzing the game played between Mr. Mahmood Lodhi and uh, Vishwanath Anand. So giving a bit of a backstory about Mr. Lodhi is that he is the highest rated Pakistani uh, player with a rating right now of 2300 something and a peak rating of 2475 which is just 25 points uh, shy of what he needed to become a grandmaster. So uh, he, he's won a lot of uh, medals for Pakistan over the years and is a, a record uh, holder of having uh, won the Pakistani national championship a record number of 24 uh, or 27 times. I am not sure. Uh, but yeah, it's one of these two numbers. Mr. Anand, as you all know, is uh, uh, the previous world champion before Carlson and the first Indian Grandmaster. Uh, so... Uh, Mr. Lothi and Mr. Anand are quite same in some regard, uh, considering that uh, both of them wanted to become uh, their respective country's first grandmaster, and uh, they both had something to prove to the other. So, without much further ado, we'll begin analyzing the game. So, Mr. Uh, uh, Lothi with the white pieces began with the move c4. Mr. Anand replied with e5. We have knight c3. Knight c6, g3, g6, uh, both sides of P and Keto, and we entered into the English. Uh, uh, we have essentially a reverse Sicilian close system. So, white will enjoy having a great control over the light squares, whereas black might try to push uh, f5 and uh, like so, uh, ca castle like so, and develop a structure uh, focusing on controlling the dark squares and also undermining uh, white's development. Uh, white uh, black has played e5, so he has made this d5 square weak, and uh, 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 and also uh, this knight is a little. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, completely. I wouldn't be completely sure about the future of this knight because if this knight ever moves, uh, this pawn uh, does become weak. So we have knight f3, f5, and knight d5, putting a piece on the weak d5 square. We have uh, knight knight ge7 and bishop g5, h6, and bishop f6. Over here, uh, Mr. Anand castles, and we have the trade of dark squid bishops. But it isn't as uh, uh, good for white as one would think. Obviously, if uh, Mr. Anand had opened up uh, this, uh, the structure a little bit, white would have greatly benefited. But uh, in a closed system where the uh, long diagonal isn't really that much open, trading dark squid bishops isn't uh, that uh, much of... A compensation isn't, isn't that much of a bad move, uh, decision for black. We have queen d2. Bit of an inaccurate move. Better would have been to uh, castle. And after that, we'd have a bishop d7. Knight d2, adding this uh, piece over here. King b8, uh, rook b8, rook c1, b5 even. And after c captures b5, knight cap, uh, rook captures b5, and a trade of uh, knights, we would enter into this uh, uh, structure where black, white would be uh, happy with this uh, e4 pawn break, and uh, black would be uh, looking to uh, pile up on the b file and attack uh, this pawn somehow. But that didn't happen. We have uh, queen d2, bishop e6, uh, adding pressure on the d5 square. Knight captures e7, queen captures e7, and queen c3. Obviously, uh, putting some pressure on the dark uh, diagonal, maybe pu uh, pushing f4 in some lines might be possible. Uh, even uh, uh, this, this, and this, or this could be possible in the future. So we have queen f6, countering the effect of the queen on c3. Knight goes back to d2. Now threatening uh, threatening to get some pawn breaks into the position. 
uh, rook a b8 protecting the weak b pawn we have e3 a6 maybe uh, maybe trying to open up uh, b5 in some lines we have knight uh, b3 putting some uh, pressure uh, uh, pr uh, on the d4 square knight goes back to e7 short castles and b6 not uh, going for the immediate b4 uh, b5 but rather uh, keeping his intentions uh, shallow for the moment or uh, maybe he'd even uh, be considering to push c, uh, c5 in some lines we have d4 c5 and d5 even uh, closing off uh, the closing off the light squared bishop's diagonal a rook goes uh, bishop goes back to d7 we have knight d2 g5 rook a d1 and a5 over here uh, b3 was played we have e4 uh, both players decide to trade off queens and a4 with, with which mr lothi closes off the queen side but it comes at an expense uh, considering the fact that all of uh, white's uh, queen uh, side pawns are on light squares whereas black is the one with a light squared bishop so we have knight g6 and g4 now this move is a bit of an inaccurate move uh, so the idea behind g4 is that if uh, black ever pushes his, pushes his pawns he is uh, simply uh, down a pawn because after takes 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 uh, king even goes back all threats are superficial white is in time to save everything even after something like this he is uh, successful in closing down the position and something like this this and this doesn't work because he will always be in time for all defenses and will simply enjoy being up upon and uh, a better uh, piece compared to white's uh, uh, dark square his light squared bishop so but uh, after g4 f captures g4 was played after uh, which we have a bishop captures e4 and a knight comes down to e5 which is a very strong piece by the way because uh, you don't have uh, a nice way of removing this uh, knight from here and this pawn uh, is a very uh, is a very cramping pawn within white's structure so uh, mr Luthi decides to part away with a pawn over here with f4 G captures f3 and bishop uh, captures f3 asking for a trade of uh, minor pieces maybe he believes he can hold this end game so uh, obviously uh, mr Lodi, uh, mr anand declines this and goes uh, king e7 we have bishop g2 we have a trade of rooks and the other pair of rooks are also traded off the board so we enter into this end game where it is actually black who is playing for two results either a win or a draw and white can only hope to draw such a position the key thing to consider over here is that uh, white has bla black has two passed pawns on the king side well not passed pawns but two pawns and compared to white's one and the main thing is that uh, if uh, the light squared bishop ever manages to come down to c2 uh, white uh, could lose all of these pawns whereas black white has no way of uh, ever attacking these pawns over here so we have h3 bishop f5 king f2 king e7 king g3 and h5 even blocking off the king uh, through, uh, through this pawn wall the pawn wall is challenge, challenged through h4 we have uh, king f6 
bishop e4 and bishop g4 so bishop g4 does threaten uh, to infiltrate this way and mr lothi makes a mistake by playing the move uh, bishop c2 now this isn't necessarily a, a tactical mistake but it is a positional mistake over here better was to go knight f1 so if ever uh, uh, if if ever uh, the bishop comes here through let's say g captures h4 knight captures h4 and bishop d1 we have the move knight d2 and white uh, black will be able to hold uh, this position to a draw uh, but instead we have bishop uh, c2 instead of uh, knight f1 which leads to g captures h4 king captures h4 and knight f3 check with check which is a, a four trade of knights so both knights are traded and now it's up to black to find a plan uh, which will both exploit the fact that he has these uh, pawns on the weak squares and uh, that he has a passed h pawn so we have king g3 bishop e2 and king f4 which is uh, as the engine says a blunder better was to play king g2 we'd have king g5 king f2 g4 e1 h4 f2 h5 e and uh, g2 and e2 so over here uh, a uh, the white king would keep opposition over the key squares as well as protect uh, infiltration uh, on the queen side through d1 but i mean it still would be uh, a bit winning for black but black would have to uh, f uh, really fight out for that win really grind that win as they'd say but the problem with uh, king f4 is that it allows the move h4 and now this king will always be uh, forced to uh, defend uh, this uh, pawn from queening we have e4 bishop h5 uh, effectively pu uh, putting a white in sunsuang so he is without without a move any move like this will be met with this and uh, any move of the king will be met with either king g5 or king uh, to e5 i mean white will infiltrate the black will infiltrate the position with his king so yeah uh, after e4 we have h5 the zhuang position and uh, white is forced to part way with his other uh, with another pawn e5 d catches e5 King goes back and bishop g5 offering a trade of light squared bishops which of course would now favor a black tremendously as he'd have two pass pawns. This pawn is too slow as the king is near, uh, near the pawn. So obviously white declines with bishop d1, e4, bishop e2, the king uh, comes in with bishop f1, bishop f5 bishop g2 h3 even uh, rook h1 oh i mean bishop h1 h2 now this pawn is one square away from queening and after bishop g2 we had, had the move bishop g4 after which mr lothi resigned the game because there's nothing more to be done the bishop will be uh, coming over here and after takes 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 and uh, this why uh, white will be winning and obviously if uh, obviously if white i will lo uh, lo move the bishop from this diagonal then white black just queens so yeah this was the game mr Luth, mr anand has now beaten a team pakistan twice and uh, in the next game we'd be analyzing the game played between fide master Vukar and vishwanath anand Hopefully, we'll be seeing some better results, but who knows? Um, I'll be uploading the next video in a few days. Until then, stay tuned, uh, subscribe to my channel, and yeah, goodbye.